In this video, I'm going to count down my top 10 toy lines that I had growing up. That's right, folks. Today, it's the toys that made me. What's up, friends? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Nerdzoic. If you're new here, this channel is all about action figures, nostalgia, and just general overall nerdiness. If you enjoy that type of content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and come back every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time for a new video. If you're a toy collector and you have Netflix, you've probably seen the toys that made us. It is an absolutely amazing documentary series on different toy lines from the 70s, 80s, 90s, hell, it goes back to the 50s and 60s that made us what we are today as a culture. Each episode focuses on a different toy line. Again, I'm probably not telling you stuff you don't know. What I did today was I went through and I figured out the top 10 toy lines that made me. So these are the toy lines that I had growing up that made me into the nerd I am today. I'm gonna count them down from least memorable to most memorable and share with you some of the memories I have from them. As a special treat at the end of this video, my buddy Kyle Peterson is going to stop by and tell us about his favorite toy lines growing up. Ready? Let's do this. Coming in at number 10, who you going to call? Ghostbusters. Created by Kenner Toys and running from 1986 to 1991, this toy line was based on the cartoon, which I believe was based on the movie. Aside from the standard figures, to me, the line's highlighted by two big vehicle playset things. One is the Ecto-2, which is the station wagon ghost mobile thing they used to ride, and two is the firehouse playset. My cousin David John and I used to play with them. I remember very well. We would set up the firehouse and I'd try to raid it with the Ecto-2. Ah, oh, memories. Coming in at number nine is Ghostbusters. What do you mean I already did it? No. I did the real Ghostbusters. This is Ghost, you're fired, get out. I'm sorry you had to see that. So let me explain to you why Ghostbusters is on this list again. Well, like I just said to him, the real Ghostbusters is number 10. This is the Filmation Ghostbusters. Somehow I like the Filmation Ghostbusters more than the real Ghostbusters, which is what usually people remember. But I don't know why, I love these guys. Primeval was like the first bad guy I had growing up. I remember these toys really well. They were released in 1986 by a company called Schnapper, which I've never freaking heard of, so that's interesting. They had over a dozen figures, but I think that the accessories are what really set this line apart. Specifically Ghost Command, which was the headquarters of the Ghostbusters, and the Ghost Buggy, which I fondly remember making Tracy the Monkey drive. Or was it a gorilla? My memories of this toy line exist more from watching the show than actually playing with the toys, though I do remember playing with them. The show doesn't hold up though. About 15 years ago, I bought it on DVD thinking, yeah, I'm gonna watch it again. It's not that good. Bummer. Coming in at number eight, wait, do you hear that? Hook, hook, hook. That's right, it's Hook. These figures were based on Steven Spielberg's 1991 movie Hook, which acts as a sequel of sorts to Peter Pan. The toy line was released then in 92 by Mattel and featured basic figures, deluxe figures, and accessories like the Lost Boy Attack Raft and the Lost Boy Strike Tank. How did we not get a pirate ship out of this line? So this toy line's memorable for me because it's the last toy line I got basically as a child before it was like collecting, but more playing. I was 10, all my friends were out of action figures, but I didn't care, I played with the hell out of them. Coming in at number seven is the Batman 1989 line. So this is based on the 1989 Tim Burton Batman movie starring Michael Keaton. The toys that went along with the line were produced by Toy Biz. I remember this toy line really well with that iconic gold packaging, and I remember wanting these so bad that my parents got them for me for Christmas, but made sure to tell me that they were from them and not Santa because they wanted the credit. So the line was really notable for its vehicles. I have very fond memories of both the Batwing and the Batmobile, which were just not only iconic comic book vehicles, but the toys were great. They were so playable. I remember shooting the missiles with the Batmobile and the Batwing. They were just awesome. I wish I still had them. So I have a really specific memory about this toy line. In 1990, my dad bought a diner and he literally worked seven days a week. He basically lived there. He literally had a cot in his office. So my mom would drop me off there on the weekends to stay with him. I remember on one Saturday, we left uh, probably between lunch and dinner, I would guess. And he took me to the mall. I don't remember what mall, but he bought me a Batman figure. And it was a Batman figure that had like a grappling rappel hook. And I took it back to the diner and played with it. I specifically remember tying him off above the steam table on a shelf and trying to glide him through, but he fell in the mashed potatoes. 
Oops. Coming in at number six is Dick Tracy. This line was released in 1990 by Playmates as a tie-in for the film that came out that year. It was a total of 14 figures and two vehicles. They have a great cartoony look to them, and I remember having them fight my WWF Hasbro figures. I think they were like managers in my little made-up figure mind. My most fond and stressful memory of this line is looking everywhere for the blank, AKA Madonna. As I was researching this video, I found out why we couldn't find it. Apparently it was a freaking Canadian exclusive. Thanks, Playmates. You ruined my childhood. I'm just kidding, Playmates. We're cool. You guys gave me some other great lines. We're halfway through. You guys enjoying the video? If you are, give it a good old thumbs up so we can get some traction on YouTube and we can continue to grow Nerdzoic Nation. And if you haven't already subscribed, this would be a great time to do it. These are the kind of videos I love making on this channel. Number five is the Food Fighters. Not the Food Fighters, that's a band. This might possibly be the weirdest toy line and the shockingest toy line on this entire list. Also shocking is how expensive it is to pick these darn things up now. It's absolutely crazy the values that these are going for on eBay. So these are released in 89 by Mattel. It included figures and three total accessories. There was a rumor of a refrigerator playset that never came to be, unfortunately. If you're not familiar with this line, it was essentially anthropomorphic food dressed in paramilitary gear. So yeah, if it sounds like it was a food military mashup, it's cause it was. Can you just imagine what the meeting was like where someone actually pitched this? Hey, Jim, you got an idea? And he's like sitting there with his taco and his pizza. And he's like, uh, 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 what about food toys? Food toys, nobody wants them. And then Jim thinks about GI Joe and says, what about a food military mashup? People love G.I. Joe. People love food. This will be great. Woo. By the way, if you're wondering what kind of names they used, how about Private Pizza and the Taco Terror? Yep, those are real. Pixel Dan did a really great flashback video of this years ago. It's a really old video, but he did a great job going over this line. I'm gonna link above, take a look at it, and uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I have a really weird memory of this toy line. My parents had a deck off their bedroom window, and I specifically remember the good guys throwing the bad guys off the deck. The good guys won, though. Coming in at number four is He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. All right, so everybody knows He-Man. This isn't like the Food Fighters. It's even experiencing a bit of a resurgence right now. Considering that we got new toy lines, we got new cartoons, Karen Smith's making a He-Man show. It's crazy. Ironically, I never bought these new, it was before my time, but one of my mom's co-workers gave her a box of them once her son grew out of them, and I played with them like there was no tomorrow. My favorite memory, and for whatever reason, these action figures make great bath toys. Let's just say that Moss Man does not look good after getting wet. Also, Battle Cat floats. Bet you didn't know that. That's the kind of insight you get here on Nerdzoic. All right, we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. Let's move on to number three. Coming in at number three is Cops and Crooks, also known just as Cops. Like C-O-P-S, but these letters stand for something. I don't know what. These were made by Hasbro and released in 1988. I'm not sure if these were a toy line based on a cartoon or a cartoon based on a toy line. Either way, I love them. The line featured 24 figures and about a half dozen vehicles. If you're not familiar with cops, they were fighting crime in future time, protecting Empire City from Big Boss and his gang of crooks. Dan Larson over at Toy Galaxy did a complete history of this franchise about two years back. I'm gonna link to that above too. Check it out, Dan did a really good job and I just watched that to prepare for this and ah, oh, the memories. I got a really sappy memory of this one, guys. There's a seven year age gap between me and my first youngest brother. First, yeah. And I was really nervous when my mom was going to be going into labors and I was really anxious about it because I had some separation anxiety. Shocker, I got mommy issues. Anyway, my mom and dad, while she was like nine and a half months pregnant, went store to store in Philly until they could find me the bulletproof action figure, which was like impossible to find. She actually dug it out of storage a few years ago and gave it to me. And unfortunately, when I moved to this house, I guess I lost it because I can't find it anywhere. So I'll be replacing that one soon. 
but Bulletproof will be one of the most memorable action figures of my entire life because of what mom did and dad did getting that figure for me. All right, coming in at number two is the WWF Hasbro figures. This line ran from 1990 to 1994 and featured almost 100 total figures. These were more cartoonish action figures than the wrestling figures we get today. And each figure came with a special feature that was cornily named after the character, such as the beefcake flop or the giant jolt. These are actually really shooting up in value right now. I made a video recently about the most valuable ones, which you can find linked above. My favorite memory of these was finding the Andre the Giant at KB Toys on just like a whim stopped the mall before a, a Memorial Day barbecue at my grandmother's house. Andre was really tough to find and that day I got Andre and the ring. Great day. I bet you're wondering what number one is. Now, before I get to number one, I want to talk about some of the toy lines that are noticeably missing that I'm sure I'm going to hear about in the comments. So let's address them. First of all, Power Rangers. I really wanted those toys, but when they came out, I thought I was too old. I was more interested in trying to find women at that point, even though I was like 11. But I looked for them for my brothers to play with, even though I wanted them. So that's why they're not on the list. Similarly, Mighty Max isn't on the list for the same reason. I adored that cartoon. If you're looking to go back and watch a cartoon and you're just bored for some reason, go find that. It was really good and ahead of its time. But they had like Polly Pocket like toys and they looked really cool. And I always wanted them, but I never bought them because I'm like, oh, I'm too old for this. Is that like Murtaugh from Lethal Weapon right there? Also missing, G.I. Joe Transformers. I know I'm an 80s kid. I should have played with them, but for whatever reason, I think they came out a little bit before my time and I got more into some of the other figures instead. Both are great lines though. They just don't hold any really special nostalgic memories for me. And last but not least, and this one's probably gonna shock people because they probably think this is gonna be number one on the list, but Star Wars didn't make the list. I didn't have a single Star Wars toy to 99. Why is that you ask? Because I never saw a Star Wars movie to 98. I know. My buddy John introduced them to me and from there I was on that note. So who's number one you ask? Let's find out. Coming in at number one is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys. Woo, yeah. Now we're getting into the feels. Released in 1988 by Playmates Toys, these were based on the cartoon, not the very adult Kevin Eastman comic. To me, this line's most notable for its play sets like the Technodrome and the sewer, which I, oh, I wish I still had that sewer, and the vehicles like the Turtle Band, which was freaking amazing, but I really like the blimp myself. Something about an inflatable vehicle really appealed to me for some reason. My favorite memory about this line I've probably shared before, but it's trying to scale the walls at Kitty City. And I didn't scale them. I got my mom to scale them. And thanks, mom. Again, she would literally climb up for me and look for the cases above the pegs. And I remember specifically looking for that fish looking dude. I don't know why, but I saw him on the back of a carded figure and I'm like, oh, he's new. I need him. He must be up there. Mom, can you get him? And she did. She was a great mom. Now that you've heard my top 10, let's throw it over to Kyle and hear what Toy Lines made the biggest impression on him growing up. What is going on everybody? Kyle Peterson here from the Kyle Peterson 1980 YouTube channel, where we look at all kinds of different figures. We review, we unbox, we discuss, we do deep dive discussions. Uh, but today, I've been asked by my friends at Nerdzoic for a top five list of my favorite childhood toys from the 1980s. Well, they came to the right place as I was a kid in the golden era of toys, the 1980s. So without further ado, let's count down my top five toy lines of the 80s. All right, starting off at number five on my top five list of childhood toys, the 1980s would be Mask. I don't know if everybody remembers Mask out there, but it brought G.I. Joe and Transformers together was the best way to describe it as a kid. Think of G.I. Joe figures three and three four size, shrunk down even more with vehicles that changed, uh, that did different things like a car that flew, uh, an awesome, awesome toy line and cartoon for sure. I definitely enjoyed the mass figures as a kid. And like I said, it brought Transformers and G.I. Joe, kind of a mishmash of both. Um, and rumors have been circulating for years that they're gonna come out with these again. But I was so excited as a kid getting these. I had the Boulder Hill play set. I had all the vehicles, uh, really one of the best lines and a little bit underrated uh, in the last few years, but I do foresee a resurgence of those. They've now been incorporated into the G.I. Joe universe. 
Um, so I think great things to come with Mask, and that would be my number five toy line of the 80s. All right, coming in at number four would be Transformers. Everybody knows Transformers, and everybody had a Transformer at one time of their life or another. Transformers were great. We go back to the animated series, uh, and just like a lot of the 80s figures and the toy lines, they were brought to life in a cartoon form that kids like myself got to watch every single day and you can reenact out there and Transformers was no different. Uh, Optimus Prime, Hot Rod, Megatron, the Dinobots, I could go on forever about the cool figures and, and the changes they did. They were really an interactive toy, more than just a dinosaur. You could turn that dinosaur into a robot or back into a dinosaur. Uh, really, really cool for its time and still cool to this day. Transformers has never really stopped producing figures. Uh, they keep going all the way to now with a new line coming out very soon at Walmart, uh, six inch uh, figure line. Um, the end is never near for Transformers, that is for sure. And I spent so many days as my childhood reenacting that 1986 animated movie. Uh, Transformers are what it was about for me as a kid uh, and a lot of kids out there I think as well. So number four on my list, that would have to be Transformers. All right, when you think 1980s toys, I don't know if number three comes to mind for everybody, but it does for me. And that is the Kenner Real Ghostbuster toys. Uh, obviously based off the movie um, that happened in the 80s, but a kid like me watching cartoons every single day, that is Ghostbusters to me. When I think Ghostbusters, I go back to that animated series and the accompanying toy line. I really enjoyed playing with these. I had the Firehouse, I had the Ecto-1, I had all the ghosts, I had all the figures. Uh, and now we're seeing them back released at Walmart uh, in 2020. So it's cool that everything old is new again. It's the exact same figures uh, I had as a kid. I was so happy to repurchase those. As I got rid of mine many, many moons ago. Uh, but the Ghostbusters line is very underrated. Maybe not in everybody's top five list. I think it just depends where you were and what you played and what you watched with. But uh, number three for me, and they hold a very special place. So that is the Kenner Real Ghostbusters at number three. All right, we're down to number two on my list. And if you guys follow me on my channel, you'll see a lot of this stuff on my channel. Uh, number two and number one is about as close as close can be. Maybe you catch me on a different day. One and two might be flip-flopped. But as of right now, as of me making this video, number two for me would be the LJN and Hasbro WWF figures. I was a kid of the 80s that loved professional wrestling. The Ultimate Warrior was my universe as a kid. Um, I absolutely love wrestling. I love reenacting them right there on the floor and I had them all. That was my number one wanted thing when I would go to the toy stores most of the time was uh, the LJN or Hasbro's. LJN's being first, Hasbro's being second. Um, I'm at the age where I got the best of both of those. I mean, people that are a little older than me only had the LJNs. People a little younger than me only had the Hasbros. I was at the perfect age to enjoy both of those simultaneously and be there for the glory years of both of them. Um, so those are two heavy, heavy hitter lines. You see it in the resale value right now. Uh, I finally caved in the last few weeks and said, you know what, I'm going to re-get my whole t entire LJN collection. Um, as I sold all those off in uh, 1999, one of the biggest mistakes of my life. I talk about it all the time on my channel, um, but I am getting all those LJN figures back. I didn't have all of them as a kid. I had pretty much every single one of them minty, and I'm working on that right now to get a minty set uh, loose for my uh, display collection. Um, but I can just, uh, my kids are, uh, they don't even know how much I enjoyed. They look at their toys and I always tell them, boy, if you guys were only around when I was a kid, you guys would have seen me playing with these. As my parents and my grandparents still to this day say, oh, Kyle played with his wrestlers 24 seven. And I really did. I'd watch wrestling, I'd play with the wrestlers, I'd reenact cards, I'd have little figure feds where I'd keep track of title histories, probably like a lot of you guys did out there as well. Um, the 80s truly were a glory, golden time for toys and a golden era for wrestling. Bring it all, bring those together. I can't think of a whole lot better out there. But that is number two for me, LJN and Hasbro WWF figures. All right, we get to number one. But first, I want to put one honorable mention in here that is kind of missing, but uh, for reason, for me at least. And that would be the Star Wars toys. I loved Star Wars toys as a kid in the 80s. I love them now with the Black Series. However, 
Uh, the years I grew up, uh, you know, being born in 1980, uh, I was after the first Star Wars movie. Um, Return of the Jedi was one of the first movies I remember seeing in the theater, but I was three, four years old. Um, I kind of missed a little bit of that Star Wars window. If I was five years older, that probably would have been number one for me for sure. But uh, being born in 1980, I kind of just missed it just by a little bit. I got into it. I had the original toys, not a ton of them, but a, a very good amount. Uh, but I got into it in the Power of the Force uh, back in 95, 96 era. Um, so that does miss my top five, but it is definitely an honorable mention as I had a lot of good times playing with Star Wars in the 80s for sure. Uh, but that leads us to number one. And if you're thinking of 80s toy lines in your head, you can probably guess where I'm going. Probably the greatest toy line of all time, G.I. Joe. Three and three four size, of course. Uh, absolutely loved, still to this day, love G.I. Joe. The new six inch line, I am so excited. I'm so fired up for that line. Uh, I cannot wait to collect all of them. But uh, as a kid watching G.I. Joe the cartoon, I mean, that was a daily ritual for me many times a day. Kids these days, they don't know how lucky they have it with DVRs and being able to record stuff. Back in the day, we had a VCR that we were, could record on, uh, but G.I. Joe was on three times a day and it was appointment television to me. Still to this day, I can tell you what G.I. Joe guy and what weapon goes with what. Uh, I love G.I. Joe. I had almost every single figure, every single vehicle. Uh, I unfortunately got rid of them all in a crazy panic. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking back in 1999. One of the worst years ever for toys for me as I sold the majority of my collection for reasons unknown. Um, but uh, I still to this day have my childhood aircraft carrier, which is the greatest toy of all time. They will never top that for me. You can't argue with me. The seven foot long aircraft carrier, it is the holy grail. And I have spent literally hundreds of hours as a kid playing with that. I absolutely love G.I. Joe. I love the G.I. Joe cartoon, like I said. I love the G.I. Joe movie. I'm all in on the new line. Uh, but G.I. Joe holds such a special place uh, in my heart for childhood toy lines of the 80s. There's no topping it. Like I said, wrestling is a close second. Uh, but G.I. Joe and all they brought to the table, the vehicles, the figures, the playability, the, the articulation at the time, uh, so many good things. And then the stories you can reenact yourself, you can make up new stories, the interesting characters, the deep file cards on the package. You know, the packaging was such an important part of all these toys in the 80s. They all bring you back that toyetic, nostalgic feel. Um, and especially G.I. Joe with the Starburst package and the graphics. And then one thing that is severely lacking to, in today's toys is the file card that you would get on the back. You could see where that G.I. Joe character was born, where he trained at, where he went to school, what his motto and his quote was. So much cool stuff on that file card. When you're deciding between one or two different figures, who looks better? Oh, this guy's from the same state as me. I'm going to pick this up. Um, so that's why and many reasons I could go on for hours of why I love G.I. Joe. But uh, for the sake of the video, my number one is the G.I. Joe Real American Hero toy line of the 80s. So hopefully you enjoyed my little countdown. If you're enjoying things like this, please follow me on my channel, Kyle Peterson 1980 All kinds of good toy reviews, toy discussion, you name it. And I thank Nerdzoic for giving me the time to talk about my top five items and toys from the 1980s. You've heard mine, you've heard Kyle's. Now tell me, what are the toy lines that made you? That's the question of the day. Comment below, let's talk about it. I'm gonna put a link up here to his channel. Check it out, if you like Nerdzoic, you're probably gonna really like his content as well. And last but not least, check out this video right here that I think you're gonna like. And until next time, stay nerdy.